Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode with the Orthodox Squad podcast. Uh, Milos is joining me today as we interview Jeremy and Nick from the Cloud of Witnesses journey with the Saints uh, show. And th- we, we've gone through this before, but there's many ways you could describe what they kind of do. Can I get you guys to introduce yourselves? Yeah. So, hi, I'm Nick. Um, I am a co-host along with Jeremy, a uh, co-creator of Cloud of Witnesses Journey with the Saints, also known as Cloud of Witnesses Radio. Um, you know, we're a really we have a really interesting concept for our podcast, which is basically voice acted renditions of the lives of the saints. I think that's probably the easiest way to describe it. Or as we were just saying before we were recording, kind of uh, voice acted or audio plays. It, it's it's dramatized. So it's a new form of storytelling in some ways. Let's let's just say it like it is. Hadi, our new friend, he has now described the best way to describe our podcast. He's like, is it like an audio play? That's exactly what it is. Exactly. Cloud of Witnesses, <laughs> Journey with the Saints are audio plays of the lives of the saints. My name is Jeremy. Um, really a pleasure to be on the podcast today with with you, Milos and Hadi. And and yes, as Nick said, I'm a, another co-host, co-creator of the uh, podcast. So the way that I kind of found found the channel was I was going through my Facebook and I saw their post. I went to their YouTube channel and I absolutely loved the format. And I thought, hey, you know what? I'll just reach out to these guys, see if they want to come on the show. Um, I know you guys are relatively new. What what kind of made you want to to start uh, releasing this kind of content? Yeah. Well, it was, Nick, I'll, I'll start it if you don't mind and then you can fill in the blanks. I think that Nick and I, by God's grace, we just kind of found right away, we seem to have, you know, what they, you know, kindred spirits, you know, very similar goals and and, and kind of hopes and dreams in terms of what can be done to help spread orthodoxy and and bring others to the knowledge of orthodoxy and the lives of the saints. And, And we had talked about doing book clubs and reading Dostoevsky and these types of things. It was kind of in that was in our discussions early on. Mm-hmm. And then literally by, we believe, the certainly the, the providence of God, um, you might even call it a minor miracle. Um, at the same time, Nick had this old play that he had written. And I'll let Nick talk about it more later. Um, but it was the story of St. Peter the Merciful. And at the same time, him and I were kind of saying, yeah, that would be cool if we could record that and do something with that, maybe even act the play out at church. Or, you know, we were kind of throwing ideas around. At the same time, you guys, I kid you not, where I work, I work at a law firm. My law firm literally said to me, Jeremy, we want you to build us a podcast studio. And they, I, I would say they gave me a budget. They didn't even give me a budget. So I was uh, just saying that, kind of the grace of God, I suddenly was able to use all this professional equipment. And we've been we've been borrowing that equipment for this whole time, actually, uh, producing this this podcast. So it was really a, a beautiful, um, providential move as in terms of how we saw it. Nick, that's my version. What are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, just to fill in some blanks, like you said, so probably going back maybe five years or four years at this point, you know, some friends and I, we would almost daily read from the prologue uh, right. by St. Nikolai Velmarovich, um, you know, the, the two volume series. And um, we came across the story of St. Peter the Merciful, whose feast day is, I believe, September 22nd, somewhere along those lines. And even though it wasn't close to Christmas time. His story was very similar to um, that of Scrooge's from A Christmas Carol. You know, a very uh, stingy miser. And I don't want to ruin the story. You just have to check it out on our uh, on our uh, channel. But basically, while we were reading this, we thought, man, this story could be a play. You know, so we we I actually turned it into I rendered it into a play. And around five years ago, uh, my church, actually, we just, you know, did a small production and it was great. It was awesome. People loved it. It was really inspiring. And then fast forward to maybe a year ago, 
uh, Jeremy and I were talking and we were, like Jeremy was saying, we wanted to help just spread the knowledge of orthodoxy and of the saints. And we were like, well, how could we do this? And, you know, there were a couple back and forth things. One of the ideas was a book club. And then it was, in fact, it was the play. We were talking about the play that I had written years ago. And then Jeremy, you were talking about the book club. And we were like, well, what if we did something like an audio book, you know, of the lives of the saints? We're like, hmm, that's really interesting. And then somehow the ideas became fused together. And we're like, well, what if we got the play and recorded it on air, like an old fashioned radio program, you know, like yeah. cowboys and Indians or something that they would, you know, that children would enjoy, say, in the 20s or 30s. And lo and behold, literally within, I think, a week, even less, Jeremy, you called me up and you said, you'll never believe what happened. You'll never believe you know? this. Yeah. 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 His law firm basically gave him X amount of money, some kind of budget to create a, you know, a professional podcasting studio. So we had all this equipment on our hands and, you know, by the grace of God, he, uh, God allowed us to have all the catalysts come together to allow this idea come to fruition within a month. I, it, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of, that's the story behind how we got going. And we've and been so kind of, I, oh, yeah, yeah, please. No, sorry, Nick, go finish off. Oh, I was just going to say, we've been journeying with the saints ever since. So. Amen. Uh, Hadi, yeah. Milos, do you mind if I say a little bit more about some of that? Of course. Of go course, for it. Go ahead. Um, what was great. So, so from that, exactly what, how Nick was describing that we released our first episode um, kind of, it was a crazy month getting it all put together. And fortunately I had had some background in, in producing some podcasts in the past. And so I kind of knew some mechanisms for, you know, how to get a podcast onto platforms and whatnot. we got all that kind of stuff set up and I'll never forget, Nick, we had such a blast. It was such a blessing. We, and this is really, you guys, and I hope we can talk about this more on this episode. The heart of Cloud of Witnesses' journey with the saints is our Orthodox Christian community. It's, mm. it, it's, our, it's really, it's our friends. It's our brothers and sisters in Christ who love just kind of coming together. We get together with either at my place or Nick's place, or, you know, sometimes we've done it at other places as well. We bring our equipment, we get set up and, and, we get to really experience the life of whichever particular saint we are performing that day. And this one was uh, the first time we were all kind of just learning as we went, but it was a really fun experience. I'll never forget it. And Nick, we released that first episode on Christmas Eve of 2022. Isn't that correct? I believe it was Christmas Eve Eve. I think it was the 23rd. Ah, uh, Christmas Eve Eve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, with re regards to us, we, we, okay, so there was always a meme channel, but yeah. so the, the decision to make a podcast was actually um, Milos's idea. He's here right now. Ooh. And yeah, he had the decision and he like grabbed a bunch of us and he's like, all right, I'm making a podcast. I want you, 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 and you. And next minute, it's like, we similarly started this whole thing about the beginning of this year. And mm. with regard to the second channel and in that time frame, um, we've talked to so many people about what they do. I can't say we have a professional studio, um, which we would be a big plus, but we all live in kind of different time zones anyways. So I'm Australian. Wow. Uh, wow. He lives in Aust uh, Austria. Um, wow. Yeah. And uh, Demos uh, lives in Netherlands. Exactly. Oh. We, we got a couple of Americans and really the only difficulty we've had so far is just coordinating time zones where all of us are kind of, you know, free to come on. I yeah. can't even imagine. We have a hard <laughs> enough time coordinating our schedules and we're all living in the same town. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's impressive, you guys. That's really impressive. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know you guys have a pretty decent following and I know this episode is kind of about us, but I, I'm wondering... I saw on your guys' website, you guys are all around the globe. And I was wondering, did you guys all go to like school together or how did you guys end up meeting? Or is it all online? Well, most I of basically us... basically kidnapped all of them online. <laughs> it happens. Well, yeah. so, 
Okay, so I know Milos and Demos have met in real life. With regards to the rest of us, like I'd been friends with Milos for a couple of years at that point. And then he's like, oh yeah, I'm making a podcast. Do you want to join? I'm like, honestly, in my head, I'm like, I, I, this is going to be so bad, but like, he's my friend. He's asked me to do it. So <laughs> you know, I'll go in. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, the very first episode was bad. Why? Because Milos lost the audio files. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's a nightmare. Um, oh, man. But yeah. <laughs> Then after that, <laughs> and, and you're never gonna let him live it down, are you? <laughs> I never. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> oh man, that's new—a silent podcast. I like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Super creative. <laughs> can, can I ask what was the uh, Milos? What was the idea? Like, obviously, podcasts are very popular right now, and and that. What was your kind of goal? Like, what was your focus on starting this this particular podcast? I thought it would be pretty cool to have like a group of people from different jurisdictions and around the world. And as we are all lay people, some of us are maybe in the core or altar boys, but we're still all lay people. And just talk it uh, casually and very simple for other lay people to get into orthodoxy like kind of a gateway, but also have like a, a lot of serious guests, like a lot of clergy who can explain it very deeply. And we can ask them questions, not like in a very high theological sense, but like in a very simple sense for the beginners so they can get more and more into it. That was That's like great. my first thought back then. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I think a big, a big challenge also was kind of getting a spiritual blessing from my priest at least, because it's like mm -hmm. you're talking about the faith um, but eventually he came, he came around and I never looked back since what I really do want to say though, is, um, uh, I was, I had it on the tip of my tongue. Uh, I, I can't, it, it was about, um, Mary, Mary, is Mary a choir singer or what is she yeah, as, as well? Yeah. So, so some of us are like in, is that a minor order of clergy? Sorry, please excuse my lack of knowledge, but is I Why don't I think so, no. Nick. You might. I don't think so. Uh, readers, not to my are, knowledge, you know, readers, readers are, right. are. But normal people who chant, they're not, because you can stand in the church and not to, next to the choir, and you can chant as well during the liturgy. Hmm. So that wouldn't think, classify as minor clergy. I think we need to do an episode on that, Milos. But another that'd be, time, that'd be it's fascinating. pretty fun. It's a great. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. But uh, with regards to your great idea, can you please tell me what kind of saints do you kind of pick out and then talk about? Is it is it so? Are you going sequentially in the prologue of Ohrid, or have you others? Like okay, let's just rephrase the question: What saints really stand out to you, and what makes a saint? What what makes you decide that this saint is one that you want to do your show about that episode about? Yeah, Jeremy, you want to? It looks like you got you some gears turning. Oh yeah, sure. Like, I'll start it off. Okay. Yeah. Looks like you got um, some gear turning. I could, I could answer. I, um, I honestly, oh yeah, go for it, Nick, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll fill in the blanks. Yeah. So you know, I think right now we're just, in one sense, we're at a, a hobby level. You know, it's not our career. So in some sense, it'd be nice if we were more scheduled, if we had more time, we were more organized. But really, at this point. We're just running off of inspiration. You know, we're reading Lives of the Saints or we hear anecdotes from a certain saint, you know, some miracle or something happens. And we're like, you know what? That'd be an awesome episode or this person's life. You know, this saint's life would be an awesome episode. And it's really not that hard to come across amazing stories of saints in the Orthodox Church. You know what I mean? I mean, course, yeah. there's truly endless stories. So really, I mean, through friends and stuff, we've always got ideas and stories getting funneled towards us. And we also have a couple other writers who write for us, uh, write with us. And so really, it, you know, it'd be nice if we would go sequentially or we would go with the calendar, but oftentimes um, we, we just go with what we're inspired to write about. Hmm. I think Jeremy, you'd yeah. agree. With yeah, that absolutely. Of... That I, that's exactly right. I would just, just to add to that, what's kind of a, when another part of the beautiful, 
I, you know, I would say evolution of, of this podcast of cloud of witnesses journey with the saints, as we kind of grow and, and get a little bit more focused and more organized than we certainly weren't in the beginning. Although we're still like, like Nick said, we're still very much in a growth, you know, model. We're still learning as we go. Um, you can tell from this podcast alone, Nick and I are not, <laughs> you know, we, we have a, a ton of experience. This is our first podcast together, actually. Uh, so this has been a, a great treat, you guys. We appreciate it. But yeah, in terms of the 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 saints that that are coming across, we do try to, as much as possible, look at the month or a month and a half, two months ahead to see which saints are feast days are coming up. And oftentimes we're pretty good. Like one of our more recent ones, this might be a little bit of a sneak peek, but we recently recorded Saint Nestor um, of Thessaloniki. And not Nestorius, for those of you watching. Not, not Nestorius, Nestorius, exactly. Yeah, big <laughs> distinction. <laughs> big He's distinction. not a saint. He's not a saint. He is not a saint, exactly. Uh, uh, according so, yeah, to, saint... I don't know if you watched Ma Mari, but he had a recent a bit of a controversy. Did you see that, Milos? Yeah, he's a famous about it. Yeah, well, just because he's Australian, he's actually like a couple of suburbs down from me. I've driven past his church a few times. Um, oh, how funny. Uh, uh, I don't follow him, but I saw him on the stream say Saint Nestorius. So for those of you watching, no, we are not Nestorian. They made a completely different Nestor. But mm, uh, yes, sorry, yes. continue. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 great. I'm glad you clarified. Uh, but this story, the life of this saint is, I think, August, his feast day is August 27th, something right around in there, I believe, Nick. October. If I remember. October. Sorry, what did I say? Okay, I meant to say October. October, exactly. And so mm -hmm. that's a really nice fit, right? We're, it's a, um, in front of us enough to where we can record it, prepare the episode, record our commentaries, et cetera. And then, Lord willing, by the time that feast day comes around, it'll be a nice little intro to, hey, you know, you're hearing um, uh, St. Nestor mentioned in liturgy and, you know, at Vespers, et cetera. And here's an episode to, where you can learn about his life. And so that's yeah. our ideal is to kind of treat it that way. But it's really true, as Nick was describing, we're still trying to sometimes just putting the train tracks down, you know, as the train's coming. Because um, mm -hmm. we've committed ourselves to two podcast episodes per month. We do the first and third Thursdays of every month and mm. might not, you guys probably know yourselves. It might not seem like that much, but it, it takes a lot to put this stuff together. Mm. Mm. It does, especially when you, you say you're adding sound effects. So I, I do a lot of audio, as you can see from the, the gear behind me. Um, adding this stuff in take, is another whole layer of work that you have to watch out for. So it's one thing to record on the equipment, but to actually make it good enough that you feel like, oh yeah, I can now post this online is another whole layer that you have to think about. Yeah, but that's I a think lot. I, something I want to go into is I think the meat of the episode. So you, we know what you guys kind of do. Now we're going to go into the lives of the saints and why there's such an important thing for us as Orthodox Christians mm. to replicate. First question I'm going to ask in the regard to this topic is I'm going to go through each of you and ask what your favorite saint is and what you liked about that saint's life. We'll start with whoever's ready. <laughs> Milos, let's go with you because we talked about this before. All right. So it uh, recently changed because now it's uh, St. Nectarius because during mm. my vacation, a uh, kind of miracle happened with him. And it's a quite a long story. It's a bit a private story. Mm. So I don't want to put it that much out. But uh, he's now my favorite saint because of that mm. thing that happened to me. But what I can say is uh, when I told my priest when I came back home or I told him the story and everything, he was like very happy with it. It explained to me yeah, that God was with you in, in that case. And uh, Saint Nectarius also prayed for you to make it happen. And what he about died. his his life kind of stands out to you? I would say, well, the first thought that I just had was like him getting constantly slandered during his lifetime and always just replying with, ah, oh, God bless them and not getting angry over it or not and not retaliating in any way. 
he wouldn't even defend himself and just trust in God and it would in the end always uh, turn out he was innocent in everything, in every accusation. That's mm-hmm. a, kind of the first thing I get when I think about his life. Yeah. I think Milos, next gonna... have you... Oh, I'm so sorry. How did you mind if I ask really quick? Uh, I'm course. sure you have. Milos, have you seen the movie Man of God? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. I quite awesome. liked it. Mm-hmm. It was a pretty nice movie. Uh, yeah. I was really happy that they even got like small details into it, like uh, sm- smaller stories. They they tried to put it in uh, because they were in a, like for us, faithful. They mean a lot, but like in a movie sense, maybe for entertainment wise, for like, uh, uh, like uh, secular people, it wouldn't be that entertaining. But mm-hmm. the directors knew what they did with it. So that Absolutely. it touched more the hearts of the faithful. Yeah. Amen. Did you watch we, it? We had, we, yeah, we've seen it. You know, it's kind of a, mm-hmm. we're very blessed. So, um, about, oh, geez, what, Nick, correct me on dates. I'm terrible with dates and time and stuff. But about a year or so ago, um, we actually at our parish here in San Diego, um, the director of Man of God actually came to the parish and she, she presented uh, to our congregation. Um, and talked about her movie and and the you know the direction and and where she's headed with her um, pub, uh, production company etc. She's actually working on a new movie. Uh, they want to do um, Saint Moses the Black, um, which would be incredible. Uh, she has this mm-hmm. this vision for how she wants to do it. But anyways, through that connection, um, we actually with our young adult group here um, in San Diego, we all kind of got together at uh, one of the priests of our church at his home, watched the movie together. And then we had an interview with the director. She came on zoom afterwards and we were able to talk with her. And, and it, that was just a very special uh, thing experience. Yeah. Um, so, so Milos, you're exactly right. Uh, she, she very much so was very dedicated to bringing the truth to the, the world at large and, um, mm. And yeah, it's just a beautiful story. Yeah. What's your favorite saint on that note? On the note of beautiful stories? You know, it, it, it it's a tough one because I almost feel like, and Nick, I'm not sure if we've never talked about this, but I, I almost have a favorite saint every new episode we do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's like, we, cause we, we get into it and you, in the power of these stories and, you know, so names like, you know, St. John of San Francisco comes to mind, of course, and um, St. Nikon um, was, was an incredible saint of God. I think of St. Fabronia um, and, and just her, her, you know, miraculous story of, of uh, bringing people to the faith just through her obedience to God, you know. Uh, but if I had to really put my finger on one, just one, um, Aside from my patron saint, who is the prophet Jeremiah, who obviously I have a very uh, close, you know, kinship with and and appreciation of, and and you know, say as you kind of were mentioning, Milos, um, like Saint Nectarios, Saint Jer- Prophet Jeremiah was, you know, he had he lived a very difficult life, right? He was ridiculed, he was thrown into prison, he was cast out, um, and you know, it's an incredible, powerful story of faithfulness. Um, But really for me, I go back to this one a lot is uh, St. Ignatius of Antioch. Um, Mm. He, a lot of it is because I, I go back, I'm a former Protestant, by the way. And by the way, I do want to hear Hadi and Milos. I would love to hear your stories of how you came to Orthodoxy or if you're cradle, I would hope we can get into that at some point as well. But I came out of very um, conservative, uh, Protestant Calvinism uh, before I became Orthodox. And St. Ignatius and his story, his martyrdom, was one of those moments in my life, reading his his letters, where it just opened my eyes and blew me away to that there was so much more there that I had never known about as a Protestant. And so St. Ignatius has always kind of remained there in the core of my orthodox faith in terms of what i that kind of faith that i aspire to and i'll leave it at this and then i'll stop talking i promise saint ignatius what it what it is about him is if you recall you guys 
he says again and again, he asks for the prayers of the faithful in those communities. And he says, pray that I don't fail in the end. It's like even St. Ignatius, who is going to his martyrdom for his faith, even he was concerned about failing in the end. And I just, to me, that's always been such a powerful understanding, right? Just that that I think we can all apply to our lives, that it's not about, hey, man, I'm saved, you know, kind of like, whatever, you know, it's over. Like, we are every single day, we are picking up our crosses, you know, God forbid, we may not end up as martyrs. Um, but we are called to offer ourselves as living sacrifices. That's something that I really appreciate about Orthodox saints and the church is that the saints all on things that actually matter have a very like mind and you often see them repeat the same motifs over and over mm -hmm. again. So I think Elder Paisios on a similar note says that it doesn't matter him and St. John Chrysostom, but I'll go in order. St. Paisios says that it's not he that has a good beginning that is saved, but he that has a good end. And mm. St. John Chrysostom on that note says something much the same. What I really like about the saints in general, so my patron saint is St. John Chrysostom. And what I like mm. about orthodoxy is this like continuous repetition, because the truth would never change if it was true, right? And it, it's what you see affirmed over and over again. It's these people from different ages, different jurisdictions, different everything. But regarding morality, it's the exact same thing. And on that note, you said, um, with what you said, St. Ignatius of Antioch, I really like to read his writings on um, church history. I know that a lot of his quotes get taken out of context. I, I, I don't, you might know which ones I'm talking about, but they're usually regarding papal claims. But if you actually look at what he's saying, he's doing the opposite of proving them. Um, yeah, so I completely understand with that saying why he would stand out to you. Uh, Nicholas, you have not told us your favorite saint yet. Can you please? Do yeah, that? it's difficult. Like what Jeremy was saying, what I think is so amazing is that certain saints, we interact with them or they interact with us, you know, and, and to have those connections those connections stay with you, you know, whether it's a miracle or intercession or just simply feeling grace or feeling their presence with you. Um, you know, right behind me, I don't know if you can see, but I have uh, Father Sarah from Rose, his, his picture. He was very yeah. instrumental in my own conversion. And I feel very close to him. And even though he's not, you know, officially a saint, I feel like he is the, he is our patron father our patron saint of san diego he was born and raised you know probably within miles of where we're living and i, I that's amazing because he's a man that brought traditional true orthodoxy to a world that is in many ways so disconnected you know the life he was living was so disconnected until he came across saint john maximovich in san francisco when he was studying up there and the conversion that he had is amazing and the fact that he had you know such an amazing relationship with St. John Maximovich. I mean, who can enumerate how many miracles St. John Maximovich has wrought, you know, and it's just, it's so amazing. But again, if I had to boil it down to one, I would probably have to choose my own namesake, which is St. Nicholas, the wonder worker. Um, I feel like he's almost like a, a guardian angel that has been following <clears throat> me my entire life, whether I've even been aware of it or not, you know, being before I was even Orthodox in the sense that, you know, I'm looking at one of his icons over here, which is the one where he's saving uh, a drowning man at sea mm -hmm. and um, being raised in San Diego. I do a lot of surfing. I'm sure, you know, some surfing culture, uh, Haiti living over in Australia, but I just felt like being in the water all the time, there's been a certain affinity because he's a patron saint of sailors and those who travel. And I just feel like there's just certain things where I see certain reflections or aspirations in my life 
very faintly reflected in his own story. But, mm. you know, he was also a, a fierce defender of the faith. You know, I mean, who who doesn't know about his famous slap heard around the world? You know, it's probably <laughs> one of the most famous knockout punches in history. Um, and then, of course, OK, he's sent to prison. But then, you know, to defend him, God gives this vision to all the other bishops, you know, of Christ and the Theotokos giving him the gospel book and his Amaphorian back. And so lo and behold, you know, they go back to his jail cell and he's reading the gospel, you know, with his Amaphorian. So it's just an amazing story. And of course, his generosity, which he's still known throughout the entire world, even the West, you know, which is so disconnected from Orthodox tradition, still his, the glimmer of his generosity, even though it's been skewed through this, you know, western santa claus it's still there whether people are aware of it or not you know I, so mm -hmm. those vestiges of orthodox tradition are still there which is absolutely amazing but he's just one of those people that um one of those saints that i think we, we just don't even know how much he's doing behind the scenes so he, he's it, it's amazing and, and you know the when he was baptized he actually stood in the font and, you know, he was 40 days old and he, I believe he proclaimed standing up, you know, which a, you know, 40 day year old baby, or, yeah, 40 day year old baby can't do, but he stood up for a couple hours and he said, glory to the holy consubstantial trinity, always now and ever and into the ages of ages, amen. And on top of that, every Wednesday and Friday, he fasted from his mother's milk. So this was a child I've, who was, oh I've yeah. I've not heard that story before. Continue. I, yeah. I, I... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny because you know people know of him, but it's kind of hard to find more details about his life. But I've been blessed to you know have some sources to be able to read about his life. So he was just one of those saints from from like literally from his mother's womb, just like Saint John the Baptist was dedicated to God, you know, and, and that strength of soul showed throughout his entire life, truly his entire life from 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 day one. So it's just very inspiring in that, in that Nick, sense. I, I love, if I can draw the connection to with the prophet Jeremiah, also famously in the passage where he says, you know, before the foundations of the world, you formed mm -hmm. me in my mother's womb. And mm -hmm. so there's this sense maybe in which even the prophet Jeremiah as well, right, mm -hmm. was from his youngest of days, uh, someone faithful to God. That's pretty. That's mm. pretty awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, I think so too. And have you done episodes on these saints yet? The ones that you guys have talked about. So Saint Nicholas appeared, just simply appeared in um one of our episodes on the first Ecumenical Council. As you know, he mm -hmm. defended the faith, and that's where the famous slap towards Arius happened. Um, so it wasn't dedicated, that episode wasn't dedicated to that event, but that occurs because, you know, we tried to, using some sources, create a sense of what the council might have been like. And there were, you know, famous uh, figures, especially St. Athanasius going against mm -hmm. Arian, either Arian preachers or Arius himself. And so in the middle of one of, you know, Arius's speeches saying that, you know, that there was a time when the word of God was not and all these things and that Christ uh, and the word of God is a create is a creation, right? And isn't a truly God. Uh, that's when we have St. Nicholas come up and just like, basically, I forgot what his line was, but something along the lines of, you know, we have to stop the mouth of this uh, blasphemer. And then, you know, you hear footsteps and then this big slap and everyone's like, you know, ah, and then he gets sent <laughs> to prison. He gets sent to prison and there's no uh, resolve in that story about what happens. But hopefully this December, I'm hoping uh, one of us can write, um, you know, an episode about what happens with, like I already said, with the bishops then getting the visions, all of them getting the vision of St. Nicholas with the Christ and the Theotokos and all of that. So I hope to write more for St. Nicholas. Well, I have to watch more for St. Nicholas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We. What, what we've done with a number of some of the larger saints, like St. Saint Herman of Alaska, we've done little snippets, kind of snapshots or vignettes from their life. 
whereas some of the other saints, very few of them, we've been able to kind of do a, a whole life, like an entire episode, a longer four episode, wherein at least, you know, you can never encapsulate the entire life of a saint, at least we can't um, in an episode. Our episodes tend to be anywhere from 15, 20 to sometimes 30, 40, 45 minutes, kind of at the max. Is that true, Nick? I don't think we've gone beyond 45 minutes yet. Yeah. And that's including some of our commentary at the end. Right. Exactly. So there's only so much you can do in such a time frame. Um, But we very much do enjoy and we we plan to go back to saints just because we've done or mentioned a saint already. We we certainly don't feel like we're done. Uh, We we see ourselves coming back, telling other stories of that saint or maybe even some at some point telling a longer form of that that same saint. Mm hmm. Well, yeah. in, in the Orthodox Church, for those of you watching, we kind of have different groups for some of the saints. Like some of the saints are equal to the apostles. Mm. You've got uh, you've got the synaxis of angels. You've got the Cappadocian fathers. And what's happening here is that saints that have certain characteristics in common, obviously, with the synaxis of angels. I'll just go for the most blunt example. They're all angels. So... The church commemorates these saints sometimes in groups. Uh, Mm. Another thing that I wanted to go over is um, feast days and saint days. So when we have a saint day in the church, we have one almost every, we have one every day of the year, don't we? There's a saint. Yeah, we do. Every single day. Numerous saints, numerous saints. Yeah. Mm. So it's the reason why we mimic the lives of the saints and why I think your message is so important is because we want we want if okay, if our goal is to become like saints, why on earth would we not mimic them? That's yeah, basically yeah. like it in a nutshell, and that's why we have feast Absolutely. days, saint days, pa- patron saints. This uh, kind of saint saint uh, I don't know what saint mania. Let's let's call it that. If to an outsider, that might be what it looks like, but it's not us. It's not coming from a bad place. It's because these guys have already lived the faith. It's like yes. if you want to be a professional soccer player, just giving a very blunt example, who like I've never met a soccer player that doesn't think like Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi is the best and then doesn't argue among themselves about it. Mm. No. <laughs> and, and what soccer player wouldn't aspire, right? To be someone like them. Right? But we all know Ronaldo, Ronaldo's the best, though. Like, <laughs> just, yeah, just, yeah. I'm a yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, I'm a Ronaldo guy myself. Can can I say, I I, Hadi, everything you just said, I I love I, that absolutely 100. percent I I know that your podcast is heard by God's grace by more than just Orthodox Christians, and we you know we've we've seen. I'm sure you guys have seen it as well. The number of Protestants or people from other backgrounds, Catholic backgrounds, coming to orthodoxy is really incredible. And a lot of it is through online social media resources, um, such as, you know, your podcast. If I could say, to kind of touch on what you were talking about, to me, and where Cloud of Witnesses comes from, really is is Hebrews chapter 11 and 12. Um, which if, if you recall, and just for your audience, I, I would encourage anyone listening to this, please go read Hebrews chapter, well, I mean, read all of Hebrews, but chapters 11 and 12, you have the description of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Noah, and, and, their, and it describes their faithfulness, right? Again and again, referring to the faithfulness of these Old Testament saints. And then you have the beautiful passage in the beginning of chapter 12, where the author of Hebrews says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, he's literally referring to all those Old Testament saints. And, you know, it it goes on. Um, My point being that even to a Protestant, who like you talked about Saint Mania, right? They certainly would say, oh, you Orthodox, you know, you're you guys are maniacal about your saints. It's right there. It's it's right in this, it's right in the scriptures, right? Looking to our forefathers and foremothers who have been faithful, they're they are our inspiration. They are ones we can look back to because they've done it. They've run the race, they've completed 
their their life in Christ. And we can learn so much from that. The icon I have behind me, uh, you can see like a bit of it is actually the cloud of witnesses. So oh, that's oh, awesome! That's awesome, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> oh man, I'll have to get one of those. That's me really too. Cool. I I didn't even I didn't even know if I knew yeah. about that. That's cool. No, that's really cool. You know, it, it's funny, Haiti, that you're uh, in Australia because I love listening to uh, Orthodox talks by priest monk uh, Cosmas. I'm sure you've heard of him. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I was literally just providentially listening on my phone to his lecture, uh, why we should listen and read the lives of the saints. Oh, and cool. he, yeah, and he he says that, well, he shows from certain quotes of uh, certain saints that it is equivalent to reading the gospel because you are seeing the gospel lived out in so many different forms, right? Um, and that's amazing because he says that, I mean, no offense, but look at Protestants. There's so many different versions of protestantism because they're reading the gospel according to their own intellect right they're but they're not following in any traditions or any of the actions right or they're not following in the ethos of the saints and those that came before us so i i think that's that's a big thing is that when you become steeped in the lives of the saints you become inspired to act as they did and how did they act they they acted according to the gospel which is christ's very words so it's it's like a link they're like a another link to you joining to the energy of god and to god's grace in your own actions in life amen definitely and uh also just with regards to the like protestants and these other denominations i find that that when you just approach them and explain your point of view, it's 10 times more effective than like going up and saying, Oh, Hey, you're a heretic, you know, or, or, or your errors, like the errors of um, like why, why whatever you think is, is silly or they're not going to listen. You're just going to get a bunch of people in the comments section that are from your own denomination that are Orthodox. And they're going to be like, you know, you well done. You, you really, prove them wrong this time but are you going to get yeah. a single protestant that actually watched your video beginning to end yeah. and got anything out of it no so why yeah. would you do it if, if your aim is to evangelize these people and you want to show them how how awesome you know orthodoxy is why are you insulting them yeah like yeah it's not what the saints would have done you know yeah. and again that shows right. their example right. and that's what i love when i think of evangelism i think of someone like Elder Joseph the Hesychist, right? Mm -hmm. He's a man who lived in a cave on Mount Athos, right? Practicing asceticism and praying and fighting against demons. In one sense, I mean, how is that evangelistic? And yet through the fruit of his prayer and the grace that he brought down and passed to his disciples, like through Elder Ephraim of, uh, of Arizona of blessed memory, who probably is a saint as well, right? So much grace has been given, especially in America through his monasteries and and all this connection to Athenite, uh, uh, I don't want to just say asceticism, but Athenite, what would you call it? Spirituality. Yeah. yeah. Right. And all that grace is, is, is being infused uh, on American soil and throughout the world. But because of this one man and his disciples living in a cave, right, they're not going out there, you know you know, Bible thumping or anything They're They're just trying to live according to the gospel and, and praying and, uh, unceasingly in the noetic Athenite uh, spirituality. And, and we're all, I believe, benefiting from the grace, especially that Elder Joseph the Hesychist um, did in those caves. I know it's like exactly. what, what you often find is people take out of context quotes of saints where like Arius is being called a, a heretic, obviously, there's a big difference between being an active heretic as in someone that is starting a heresy within the church and being born into a denomination and not having any idea what the difference even is. So mm -hmm. like there's, there's, you can't treat, you know, someone that you think has bad theology like Arius because they're not they weren't orthodox to begin with most of the time. Yeah, definitely. That's a great point. That's a great point, Hardy. Um, But okay i think what i do want to focus on now is to kind of flesh out how you what's something that you've seen a saint do that you kind of like how does 
how does copying the lives of the saint play out in your life? That's the question. Mm. And I'll start again mm. with Milos because we've talked about this beforehand. Um, they are playing out in multiple ways. Whether it's like celebrating the feast days at home and at church or doing, let's say, of this saint today, this had Akatis or, or this one, depending on the situation and what I need in my life. It's, I would say the first thing that, that we get from them is first their fruits, what they achieved for us, whether it's even just by prayer in a cave, we can still see the fruits of uh, Elder Joseph. Or, for example, another big thing is just comfort. We know that they suffered. They have all had of the, uh, all of them had a tough life, and they suffered for us as well, and prayed for us as well. And there is no better role models than the saints. <clears throat> That's how yeah, I would definitely. put it. <laughs> how about yeah, you guys? That's beautiful. Milos, it's very well put. It's beautiful how you put that. I appreciate that very much. How does that pay out for you, uh, J uh, Jeremy? I heard uh, Father Peter Hears um, fairly recently within the past few months. He said, I loved how he put it. He talked about, you know, what should an Orthodox Christian do if you're struggling? Right. If you're struggling with faith or you're struggling with, you know, sin or whatever it may be, he said the answer is go back to the lives of the saints. And 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 I thought that answer was so powerful because you might, you know, you might think, well, there's lots of other answers we could give, right? We could say, well, go talk to your priest. And of course you should, you know, and and go read scripture. And yes, of course you should. But there's something special about going to the lives of the saints, especially with spiritual guidance from a spiritual father to particular saints who maybe have experienced what you've experienced or in some way, right? You maybe are, you're experiencing a taste of what they went through um, probably on a much greater level. For me, like that kind of, of inspiration and, you know, to the best of my imperfect ability to try to mimic their faithfulness, their grace, their generosity, um, those are things that I strive for in my own life um, to, to play out in my own life as much as I possibly can um, because of the lives of the saints. Uh, how about you, Nicholas? Yeah. I think it goes, it's really a fusion of what both Milos and Jeremy have shared, which is, I think in one sense, I don't really think of one saint per se or that I'm trying to mimic, but almost when you become steeped in the knowledge and lives of the saints, it becomes almost just a way of being and thinking, you know, like, oh, this saint wouldn't do this, or this saint would do this, or, you know, it, it, it's, I don't really know how to put it into good words, other than becoming infused with their the inspiration of their lives and, and allowing yourself to, to, I think in some ways, you know, as Protestants always have the scriptures on their minds, right, and are, are inspired by the scriptures, we can also be infused and steeped in the lives of the saints for day-to-day -day things, you know. Oftentimes I go back to St. Nectarios, you know, whenever I feel like I've been slighted by someone, I just think, I can't even, like, this guy looked at me sideways or this guy cut me off on the freeway. Meanwhile, you know, St. Nectarios is blessing people for, I mean, absolutely demonic slander to be honest a slander inspired by the demons you know and he he's blessing these people and truly loving them so it's examples like that where you know certain anecdotes or certain stories just infuse me as i as i'm living it's almost like an iv you know to to stay attached to can, can i piggyback on that hadi milos do you mind if i jump in on that because nick i love that sure, i think that's that's awesome for me it's taking what you said, Nick, because it's so important to understand, especially if there are any Protestants who are listening right now, it's, it's not an either or, right? You mentioned, you know, Protestants might go to the scriptures and Orthodox, we can go to the saints. I, I think we all agree here, gentlemen, we believe it's all 
of the the story of Christianity, right? The scriptures, just as much as the lives of the saints, just as much as the fathers, just as much as the ecumenical councils, like the the life of the church, the faith hmm. in Christ, you know, established two thousand years ago, it's played out in all these ways. And what Saint Nectarios is living is is also in here, right? It's it's not like it's one or the other. It's both. Yes, it's great to read scriptures, and Orthodox do read scriptures, and we we do all the time by God's grace. But we also have the lives of the saints, and that's something that Protestants can't say. A Protestants can say, well, we've got the scriptures. That's great. That's awesome. So do we. But do you have the lives of the saints as well? And that's one of the beauties of Orthodoxy. Hmm. Yes, exactly. Uh, for me, at least, I think uh, following the saints' prayer rules has been really helpful. So I, I like to use the um, prayer rule of St. Pa Patromius and St. Seraphim Sarov. I'm sure most people would know the second one, not so much the first. But the prayer rule that they have is referred to in the same way. Uh, that prayer rule really kind of helps me. Because when I, well, you know, when when someone's like, oh, you know, pray and pray about what's what you want God to do for you, that's not really edifying at all. And that's not how you're supposed to pray anyways. You don't pray to get things from God. That's a big misconception that I've seen so many times. You know, you follow a daily prayer rule, and that's been very helpful for me, where you're glorifying God. That's what you're doing when you're praying. You're giving God worship. You're not worshiping yourself. And that's what you're doing when all you see God as is something that like is a magic genie and appears and gives you things. Mm. So if you follow these prayer rules, they also, they, because people say, you know, let's say you want to worship God. You don't, you want to focus on God himself. It's hard to get your mind in order and organize your thoughts. I find. So when I follow a rule that someone else has already put for me, I find it so much easier. Mm. And that's for me, one of the biggest things that I like to mimic the lives of the saints with, if mm. that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's um, huge. Yeah. They, very often they've, they've already said it. They've said it better than I could ever say it. And usually they're more comprehensive. They say things where I think I wouldn't have thought of that. I, I, I love that audio. That's a great mm -hmm. uh, principle to take away from this. And, what was this? Know, what was the oh. prayer rule you mentioned before? I'm so sorry, I, Hadi. What was that? Uh, the first one. What well, the? It's the. It's a simple. It's, it's called a simple prayer rule, and it's ascribed to two saints: a Saint Patromius, um, and Saint Seraphim of Sarov. If you just look up the prayer rule of Saint Seraphim of Sarov, though, it'll just show up easily. Hmm. Gotcha. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um. That that like he literally says that Saint Seraphim Sarov says basically, and this is um building on what you said, Nicholas, is that if you require the spirit of peace, then thousands around you will be saved. So Amen. it's not like this is what I find is a big issue with um Christian groups in the West is that going they go onto the street and they like start screaming at people like repent or you'll be saved. That's not what you're supposed to do. And it doesn't help anyone either. Uh, you work on yourself, and the first person that you want to save is your own your own salvation. Only when you you feel like you have any idea of what you're doing with your own life, do you have a right to start talking to other people about mm -hmm. about um the faith, really. And you don't put it in people's face by force. If, if someone doesn't want to listen to you, just stop bothering them. Like mm -hmm. people are allowed to say no. That's what free will is. You're literally trying to remove the whole point of repentance, which is their active decision to repent. Mm -hmm. When you walk up to them in the street and you're like, you know, um, you got the loudspeaker, you got the the thing that it, the, yeah. the speaker box that it comes out of. You're taking mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. that right to actively choose not to listen mm -hmm. to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And you're being annoying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be blunt with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
That's yeah. not what the Saints would have done. That's why the lives of the Saints is important because they show us how we should approach people, how we talk to people. Mm-hmm. Amen. And how, how not to talk to people, which is just <laughs> yeah. important. 100%. <laughs> yeah. 100%. That's such a great point. Yeah. I can't I think, think of which oh. Saints said it. Oh, sorry, Nick. Go oh, ahead. no, I was just going to say, people, whether they know that they have a soul or not, are perceptive you know and if someone feels like they're being trampled upon whether it's in the name of orthodoxy or in the name of protestantism or in the name of anything if they don't feel like they're being respected right if the if the image of god in them isn't being respected how how would you expect them to listen you know but that's the beauty of the humility of the saints is that they go inward and there's that spiritual magnetism that brings you know, others to them. I'm St. Paisios. How many people did he have, you know, visiting in his little hut on Mount Athos and his, I mean, the ripple effects that he has for us today is amazing. Yeah, definitely. Um, I had a question. I, I, uh, yeah, I will go with the quote that I had then ask the question. So the quote, the quote is, this is building on what Jeremy said is that with regards to St. Ignatius of Antioch, he says, on the exact same note, and like I was saying before, indeed, it is better for us to be quiet about our beliefs beliefs, and live them out than to talk eloquently about what we believe, but then fail to live by it. Mm. And I think that is so relevant. That's huge. That's huge. That's mercy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, you guys, that's, I mean, quite frankly, that is, you know, uh, Hadi, you had mentioned getting you know a spiritual blessing to do this type of thing and you talked about how because that is right that's the challenge you know saint ignatius is, is even two thousand years ago before social media he had his finger on the very real challenge of frankly people doing what you what we're doing right now right which is and and you know lord have mercy right lord have mercy on us all for you know any words that i say that are are wrong or misleading or you know whatever um and and can in any way stumble somebody or um it's it's a massive responsibility um and and yeah words like that need to be remembered every single day at the same time also you got to remember i I can't remember which saint this one is but i do remember it's like go out and preach to every creature it doesn't say Mm -hmm. like that I, i cannot remember the saint but i do know a saint said it is that go out and preach to every living creature So you have to understand the context in which they're said. Of course, you preach to everyone, but what's the point of preaching to people if you can't even preach to yourself? Like I just said, you have to work on yourself before you go outward in any way. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And if you're wrong, just be open to be open to correction. And I think I cut you off, Nick. Amen. Um, Oh, that's okay. I was just gonna say, you know, bringing it back to our podcast, I think that was the most inspiring thing that made us want to start it. Is that there's so much resources. I mean. You know, this is this is two volumes, but there's six volume sets out there by uh, Saint Dimitri of Rostov, or the, you know, the large twelve volume set, which is, I mean, you know, as as long as a person, it's like six feet long worth of you know thousands of pages. You know, there's so much inspiring and blessed material out there on the lives of the saints that, Amen. you know, it, the fact, the reality is, is that we're living in a time and in a society where things like social media and media in general, Hollywood has its tentacles on everyone and on everyone's minds and their psyche. And I think it'd be foolish of us as Orthodox Christians to not try to reach people through those mediums. Mm -hmm. So I think that's exactly actually what Yelena said when she was talking about her inspiration for making the movie uh, Man of God on St. Nectarios. She was just saying that, remember that, Jeremy, when she was talking in our church, we were just looking at each other like, this is exactly, we could verbatim say what she said as an inspiration for us, which is there's just a dark void right now in social media and in media in general, and we've got to fill it with something positive, you know? So I, I think there are just, there there are so many hungry souls out there that just need to hear the truth. And what not a better way other than through the lives of the saints. And the writings. So that's our, what we're our, too. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The, the prologue, the prologue, 
Polygraph Authority is, in my opinion, a bit overpowered because it's the lives of the saints written by a saint. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's no, awesome. It's, it's such a it's such an incredible blessing for what for for the world, really. You know, Nick, you talked about the you know the the consequences, right? The blessings that come even years and years and years, not to mention decades and hundred centuries later. Sometimes, you know, in the, these saints this is an example of it, right? It's, it's truly, truly incredible. And really, you know, gentlemen, that's our goal, you know, with, with cloud of witnesses journey with the saints, what we've said from the beginning, we want by God's grace to create a library, right? Imagine like a catalog, just like those, you know, 16 volume sets or whatever it happens to be for the future age, right? Where people are listening to their books and they're, you know, their cell phones and they've got their headphones in all the time and they're, you know, um, those types of things. We want to create the content so that the lives of the saints are accessible and Lord willing, even entertaining in a certain sense, not for entertainment's yeah. sake, of course, but but they're going to be engaging, engaging Lord willing. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. that's that's really the goal of our of our podcast. Mm -hmm. it, it's a... Uh, anyway, it... um, did you guys already do a video about uh, St. Nikolai Vilimirovich or is there one plant? No, no, that's right a good idea. You know, Saint Nikolai again. <laughs> he's a he's another saint that I feel very close Writing to. Writing it down. Because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's another yes. saint I feel very close to because number one, he lived in America. He reposed in America, but I mean, the prologue that he wrote was also very instrumental in me coming to the faith. You know, mm. uh, trying to be steeped mm. in again in the in the examples of those that came before us. After a while, it just becomes undeniable you know, yeah. that I have to, I have to do something about this. Right. So anyways, yeah. I think I've got oh, two... quite a turbulent life. He also survived the camps. Yes. Before mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really incredible. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, how do you want to say something? No, I was just going to like ask him another question. I have two more left before we wrap up. So the, the first sure. one is really straightforward and it's like your voices how did you naturally have the vocal inflection or because i've heard how you speak and even now when you speak it sounds like audio play voices uh, yeah did you, did you practice for that or just naturally that's kind of something that you had uh we I, hadi we, we were we were born this way no <laughs> 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 no I, for, uh, for me i i in my past, I've done some acting and I did some things. And so I've always kind of been, always had like at least a foot or a toe in this kind of realm, you know, in mm -hmm. terms of doing, producing content, I guess it's to say being a content creator, maybe that's one way of putting it. Um, so yeah, I, you know, by God's grace, I just, I do the best I can. Um, but you should hear some of our actual voice actors. We actually have a couple guys, believe it or not, who have professional experience doing voice acting um, hmm. and, and they bring such a higher level uh, certainly than what anything I can bring to the table. And we, we are so grateful for their, for their time and their, their talent. Yeah. I could say that I was born this way, but my voice, I don't know. I kind of cringe whenever I hear myself. I'm like, Oh my <laughs> gosh. Okay. I need to stay in extra, but uh, yeah, no, it's, he's, it's Nick. Amazing. he's the sound guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm the sound guy. That's all I do. I do the sound effects, but no, it, it's amazing. Again, just like how we got the equipment to start the podcast, God has just brought people to us. It's like, wow, this person either didn't know they were really, really good, or a couple of people, like Jeremy said, are professional. They have professional experience doing this kind of stuff. And by God's grace, they they love joining us and adding to, you know, to our production. And we truly couldn't do it without our surrounding community and their volunteer and their inspiration. You know all, all the volunteered hours 100 percent uh the last question is just something i've been wondering for most of the podcast is what's the in your uh camera i know that's the price panto create creator icon behind you jeremy but for you nicholas what's that the one that's hanging to my to me it looks like it's on the right it's like on the shelf other way other way oh yeah oh yeah. what's that oh this is this is a uh, here. Let me walk over to it. 
It's actually <laughs> a, what would you call that? Like a cross-stitched, it almost looks like a painting because it's so well done, but it's actually a cross-stitch of the St. Basil's Cathedral in, uh, in a, is that Moscow or St. Petersburg? Yeah. There's yeah, a bit of Moscow. a, it's a, mm. there's a bit of a, uh, what do you call it? A glare right now. Sorry about that, but it's an amazing piece of work that I got from a friend. Um, mm. And I wish there wasn't a, a glare, but yeah. So it's just a really beautiful cross stitched, I guess you could say photograph or, or a mural of, of the beautiful domes there. All right. Well, yeah, it looks, I like the whole wall there. That's a very nice setup. Yeah. He's thank a you. Beautiful icon corner. Yeah. Yeah. You know, gentlemen. Our... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, finish off Nick. Oh no. I was just going to say, yeah, it's, it's my wife and I, it's, it's our prayer corner. So we got some major saints. Here we go. It, it This has to do with the topic. So I'll please indulge me as I do a little tour. We've got St. Anthony, which is the patron saint of our church. St. Anthony the Great, that is. St. Herman of Alaska. I actually lived in Alaska for uh, for around four years. So he's very close to me. I was within walking distance of his relics by God's grace. Um, and for those of you listening, we have Cloud of Witnesses Journey with the Saints episodes that feature both of those saints. Mm -hmm. We also have the prophetess Anna with St. Nicholas, which is amazing because that's my wife's patron saint. A friend so cool. found them together. I don't I don't understand how they did that, but they gave that to us for a wedding. Uh, saints Peter and Favronia. Uh, there's glare, so you can't really see them. Patron saints of uh, marriage. Uh, more of St. Nicholas. A little one of St. Spiridon from Corfu when my sister went to where his relics are. St. Mary of Egypt. Uh, with Saint uh, Zosimus and of course Christ. It's a beautiful icon, yeah. Awesome. And and there's more, there's more, but I don't want to get too exhaustive. That's <laughs> no, a very you know, nice. something, nice. gentlemen. You. Uh, something I was going to ask. Um, I know we're coming to the end here. I was kind of curious if you guys would like to talk a little bit of shop. Um, I'm kind of curious what what's your guys's production schedule and and how do you guys break up, especially because you guys are remote from each other. How do you guys produce this podcast? Um, well, basically, what happens is uh, we we kind of all kind of message people that we think might be interested uh, and that we want on the show. Then we centralize the we like we have another uh, channel like we've got a central hub where we organize everything. This is meeting plans. This is editing. This is that, and it's organized in such a way that you know where to find everything. There's links to all the socials. And you, we kind of, I, I like one, for example, myself, I would say, Hey, Milos, there's a podcast at this time. Are you in, are you out? Then he'll say, Oh yeah, I can do it. And then if I know that at least one other guy will be with me, then I'll message the group, see who works in what time zone. We were supposed to have Demos here today, but he decided to go sleep instead. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we we won't hold it against them we won't hold it against yeah. them yeah um but yeah we just kind of organize a time that works for everyone and then once we have the time then we confirm with the guest we make an article on the website we oh. so we we post like i don't know if you've got a blog or or uh, you've got the facebook i'll find something that you've written and i'll add it in I'll put the video link and then we kind of announce it on the plat for all the platforms. Demos puts it on the, the meme channel. Then we'll mm -hmm. announce it on the Twitter accounts, the kind of Facebook. And by organizing it in that way, it, it actually is more effective than if we lived in the same place. Why? Because if I'm asleep, then I know these guys are taking the episode. And if they're asleep, nice. then they know I'm taking the episode. That's great. And, yeah, that's really cool. And we can also like... I feel like sometimes it also helps with the like language differences. Like Milos has helped me big time, uh, like talk to some people in like Romania or something. Um, the yeah, I did I yeah. forgot about that? <laughs> I was like, did I? <laughs> so basically, it actually is very helpful in reaching people that I I had no idea this guy existed. Um, but I've been able to find out about that whole group, that whole, I don't know what the word is, but it's like a whole 
community rabbit hole yeah a whole rabbit hole that i can go down and find more people down that rabbit hole now after Mm -hmm. speaking to you guys i've seen you talk about the like for example this is my thinking you've talked about the saint nectarius film and you've said that the director or the person making it is open to talking on zoom now i will now message her and ask her if she'd like to appear on the channel and that way i now like that that's what i'm thinking that's the whole thinking process and then Absolutely. we record all the episodes or most of them before the season starts. And hmm. that way, so in this season, we still have another three episodes. We've already got another two recorded. This would be, I think, the last or second last. It depends what order we decide to put it in. But that way, it doesn't feel like, oh, yeah, I just made the episode. I have to upload it in three days. Because we we like recorded most of them before the season began then we can just upload at a steady time every single time. And when we feel like we need to add more, we can do it whilst we already have pre-recorded videos. So it helps to be organized, I I guess. And the time zone thing, if anything, makes it more effective, not less effective. Mm -hmm. And it, it increases reach as well, because if we were all in, say, Australia, all in America, it's like, okay, we're reaching an Australian audience or an American audience. But now, because we're all from different time zones, we're reaching a global audience, if that makes that's sense. That's, that's amazing, you guys. What a what a awesome thing you're putting together. That's, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hope I didn't talk your ear off for this episode. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by that stuff. It's something that Nick and I talk about all the time, um, mm-hmm. just in terms of process and you know because we've kind of we've been tweaking here and there our own process you know we're kind of learning as we go we've recently decided to greatly reduce our intros we used to kind of do kind of a slower long form kind of like sit back and relax type of intro and we're realizing you know we're we're probably shooting ourselves in the foot a little bit with that in today's world You know, so now we're we're kind of cutting right to the episode pretty much right mm-hmm. away. Um, mm-hmm. So things like that, and in terms of our process, how we put things together mm-hmm. and whatnot, we're yeah. we're continuing to grow how we do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you know, we're we're like we haven't even existed for a year yet, so we're we're still you know very much grassroots. We're just starting up, but you know, we're really excited that, you know, you guys invited us on here and we hope that we'll um, have some more listeners, you know, some of your followers, some cross pollination going on. But, Mm. you know, I think that we can all agree that we, we have a certain camaraderie in the sense that both of uh, both of our channels content is about trying to edify our listeners and and spread, spread orthodoxy. So, oh yeah, please. So I was going to say it's exactly like that. And I think when Milos and I, I sent the, I told Milos about your channel, we thought that it would be a very great idea if your channel like got that wider reach because it has the quality, Mm. like it has the quality, it has the basis to deserve that reach. And I want to see, all all of us are on the same page here. We want Orthodox evangelism to go as far and wide as possible. We want the world to be Orthodox. Um, yeah. so thank you guys for deciding to come on today I think we've for you viewers we've gone over quite succinctly why the lives of the saints are so important please check out their channel it's going to be in this description down below give them a subscribe a like a thumbs up and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you next but time before guys. you click up I gotta say something Hadi has no clue about football. He called it soccer and Messi is way better. <laughs> and God bless, guys. Yeah. Hey, guys, we want, we want to have you on our podcast as well. Um, I have a feeling when we do a particular saint, we'd love to bring you on and talk about it at the end. So let's, let's yeah. definitely stay in touch. God yeah. bless both of you guys and your whole team. Thank you very, very much for bringing us on. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for on. coming on, guys. Thank That's you. Thank awesome. you for having us. Orthodox Squad and the Cloud of Witnesses were signing out. See you next time. Thank you.